so welcome everybody. Thank you for joining today. Uh, you will want to have today a paper towel, which is pretty typical. I say that every class. Um, a couple of containers of water, one clear and one to rinse your brushes in. If you only have one, that's fine. It's just, I, I suggest two. One gets kind of muddy, so. So this is a picture of Loon Lake. There's a loon in the center, it's a silhouette. The colors we're going to do are cerulean blue, yellow, ochre, red, and black. And we'll want a credit card, which I didn't bring with me today. I'll find something. I've got a ruler actually. I'll use the edge of a ruler to do what I want to do. So. The, the corner of a credit card, much like the corner of this card. So we're just looking for a little edge and we're going to make some grasses with the silhouette um, black color in the forest spots. Just another uh, technique, something you can do with a credit card or a gift card. It doesn't have to be a current one or if you have a current one, you wanna pop your driver's license out of your wallet, we'll just get a little paint on it and it'll wipe right off. So we're not gonna cut it up or <laughs> do any damage to it. So thank you everyone for coming on again today to the watercolor class. I appreciate you being here. It's my honor to teach what I learn and share with you. And just sometimes it's just fun. We laugh and have, you know, laugh at each other, laugh at our, ourselves. I laugh at myself a lot, which I think is kind of healthy. So my pictures don't always turn out exactly the same way and maybe yours won't either. And if you're painting with somebody else alongside with you, please don't think that your picture has to look exactly the same as theirs. That's not the intent. If you want your trees to look a little bit different, I will show examples of different kinds of trees during the class so that you can change that up if you want to when we get to that point. Also handy for today, if you have it on, and is a blow dryer of some sort, maybe use yours isn't as big as mine or bigger, uh, but a blow dryer, because in order to get that silhouette on top of the background color, we'll need to have a dry surface. So this is a step-by-step -step gentle watercolor class, not meant for perfection. Please remember, it's just a piece of paper. Um, for those that are just coming on, we'll want some paper towel. You'll want a couple of containers of water. I do have one larger brush. It's, it's, it's a wider brush. It's maybe a half inch wide, just, just so that I use less strokes to go across the page. If you have one handy, that's great. If not, just a pointed brush is fine. And then I have a couple of finer brushes. I think I have a two and a three on hand. But just keep in mind that this is just to learn some new skills, work with like-minded artists and try something different. Now this particular watercolor can also be done, well, any of them that I do can also be done in acrylic. So this is an acrylic version. So you can see it's done on a canvas. So it's an acrylic version of the same picture. So that's a six inch by six inch square block. So if you want to try something like that, it's kind of a fun idea, a nice gift to give. Or, or if you have a small corner of your house that you're just looking for a picture, this is a pretty one to put in a corner. So, or some spot that you just want to fill in. So let's just take three deep breaths. We'll, we'll just focus on our breaths and get centered into the art class. So I like to take three deep breaths and then, and I just hold it at the top and then just release and drop my shoulders down as I release. So just find something in the room that makes you smile, something that makes you happy, something you like. And take a deep breath in and hold it at the top and look at that object and smile and release. Really drop those shoulders down. We hold a lot of tension in this area. So we'll just release that if you wanna give yourself a little massage. Second deep breath in. And hold it at the top and smile because it feels good. And drop your shoulders and release that breath. And a third deep breath in. And hold it at the top and release. Really let that go. 
if at any point during the day or any other time throughout the week, you find there's something going on that's stressful or you just need to take a deep breath, just practice that and it will get you through. I'm going to turn my camera. We're switching to the sketch. So I'm starting just like you with a blank canvas, except for my lines. So let's start with some color. Now that we've got this, this, um, this canvas up on my easel, and I'm, I'm go, actually, actually, I'm going to start with my largest brush. This is my wide brush. If you don't have a wide brush like this, a smaller brush is fine. I'm just going to use the wider brush because it takes up less strokes. So I'm dipping in my water, only water. And I'm going to go across the bottom half of my picture with water. So just clear water all the way across. Now I don't want it to be soaking, soaking wet, but I do want to prime that canvas, get it all wet. So if you turn your canvas towards the light, you'll see if there's any spots you've missed. And it's totally okay to go right over that loon. And I'm going to use my paper towel just on the outside edges and the bottom, just to take off any excess water on my back drop. So this backer board, this is just a piece of cardboard covered with white paper and then clear plastic tape. So in other, other cases, I use a placemat that is a vinyl. But they're fairly, fairly inexpensive to make. If you, if you get anything in the mail, if you have a piece of cardboard from, from the back, you can even use a cardboard from a cereal box and just, cut, just put a piece of white paper on it, put some clear tape over, and that can be your backer board. If you have an official backer board somewhere that you would have picked that up from an art store, fantastic, but I'm not encouraging anybody to go out and spend more money than you have. So I've just got my, my, the bottom part of my canvas wet. And now I'm going into my color yellow. So I have a medium yellow. And I'm not looking for chevrons like, like this, like this, like this. I'm looking more for lighter, more flowy colors. So if you put, if you press your brush onto the canvas and then lift it off, you will get a little bit of a tip on the end. So just let that tip run a little bit so you'll get some nice flowy marks. But I'm not looking for square marks like, like a chevron, like road signs. So that canvas is dry just enough, I think, to go ahead and put on some yellow markings. So I want to leave some white. So I'm, I'm even going below that line. I want to leave some white on my canvas. And I'm just putting yellow. And because there's water on there already, it should be flowing a little bit. I want a fair bit of white showing, and I want it to look a little bit like waves. So give it a little bit of energy. And we can come back and add a little bit more on this. As we move along, we'll add a little bit of that red color that we're going to put up above. So I'm just going to fill in a little bit more. It looks like an awful lot of white, so I don't want quite as much white. You can go right alongside that loon. You can go right over that loon if you like. 
because we are going to put black on there. Well, we might even come along after and just add a little bit of ochre to that, just to give it a little bit of a, a different variety of color. So I like to work from section to section. I'm going to let this dry. I'm just gonna leave it alone. I'm not going to add any more color for now. I'm going to move right up to the very top of the canvas and I'm going to work wet on dry, which means I'm going to use wet paint on a dry surface. That way I'll have more control of where the color is going. When I do wet on wet, sometimes it gets a little blurred and that's okay, that's beautiful for the water. But for the sky, we want to ensure that we have good coverage. So we're going to go right around this, this moon and we're going to go right to the outer edges just at the top of the page. And I am using something called cerulean blue. So with my blue, I'm going to leave my sun open. I'm going to go around it so I'm sure I leave it open. And I'm going to come right to the other side on both sides. I'm going to go right to the other side. And I'm going to put this cerulean blue right up to the top. Fill that in. Right over to the other side. I'm just doing light stroke. Just holding the brush part way down the stem, not really trying to do any pressure. If you get stressed, remember, just take a deep breath. It's just a piece of paper. So we'll just put that nice early in blue. It doesn't have to be exact. If you've got highs and lows, lights and darks in there, that's okay. I'm going to take a damp, just just, uh, just uh, take a piece of paper towel, uh, put a piece of, uh, uh, just uh, dip it in the water, squeeze off any excess water, and I'm just going to clear out the center of that sun. I don't want any blue in there or moon. I'm not sure which it is, but just clearing that out so that I have a nice white spot. With watercolors, we leave white. When you're painting acrylics, you paint or you add on white. Well, that's part of the difference. So I'm gonna go back on, just add a few extra wisps of blue, just color. You can see I've got some lights and darks. I like that, I like that it's got variety. And again, I'll just tap out that extra dot of blue in the center. Now the same yellow that I have in the water, the same yellow I've used medium yellow. I'm going to put that yellow below my blue, but I'm going to leave a little bit of a white space in between. I'm just leaving a little bit of a white space there because I'm going to go back with my brush. Once I have this yellow on, I'm going to go back with my brush and bring that color together. I'm going to next use red. 
So again, I'm leaving a gap between the yellow and the red. I know it looks a little bit kindergarten-ish at this point, but we are going to blend it together. I'm bringing that right down to the line. Bring that red all the way across where that imaginary line would be in the center, still going right across. Still leaving that gap of white in between. And you can see it's not a perfect line. I didn't draw those lines on purpose because then we can have some fun playing with how we want the colors to blend. So right to that line. And if it's lighter or darker in places, that's okay. And if you've gone below your line, that's okay too. Don't worry to try and get that out. We're actually going to bring that red down a little bit into the water as well. So it's fine if you've gone below that line. So now I've dipped my brush, I've cleaned my brush off and I've dipped it in clear water. So it's just clear water and I'm just tapped it off on paper towel. And I'm going to just touch on the edge of my blue and run that blue down right to the yellow. So it might get a little bit lighter on the blue. It'll, be a, it'll look a little bit hazy. So I'm just running that blue down right to join that yellow. So that white isn't going to look white anymore. It should look like a soft bluey color. And if it starts to blend a little bit with the yellow and turn a little bit greenish, that's okay too. So we just want that haze in between. So we're taking away that hard edge just by using a damp brush. We're just bringing that color down a little bit, just adding water just to soften that edge. Well, it might take a little bit of working with it, but that's okay. So I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow up into there so it's not quite as stark. I don't like what I don't want it quite as white. So I'm going to add a little bit extra yellow. I'm not looking for a break quite as dramatic. I have a little bit of pooling of color, so I'm just going to tap my paper towel and that will pick up the extra pooling. Then I'm going to rinse off my brush. And I'm moving back into that red. So I have the red already on my canvas. Looks a little bit pinkish, but it is red color. I just with the water, it's, it's, it's lightened. So watercolor will dry 20 to 30% lighter from when you put it on. And that's what's happened with this. Now I'm going to work with the red and meet up with my yellow so that my yellow and my red will start to turn a little bit orangey. I want to blend that until it's a little bit orangey. And I can drag that right down to that line. You see, I've got a soft orangey glow in the middle. It's just a little bit lighter up in here and then starting to get a little bit darker. And same with the other side, working with the red, blending it with that yellow. And then just running the rest of that color down. Now 
and I'm not finished with that red. I'm going to take that red underneath my line. But if I do this just as a sample, I'm leaving a white space between the red up above and the red below. So there is a, a little white space in between, which will indicate my shoreline. So you can see it doesn't have to be perfect. It is a shoreline. We do go up and down. It's a really nice indicator where the sun is shining and glaring in the water. So there's a nice pickup of that color. And then with a clear, damp brush, I'm going to blend that, soften it to have it come right into the yellow that's there. So just a light touch, just blending that together, just letting that red just be picked up in between where the white spots are and the yellow. It will just show up very pretty. So I'm just lightly, I used a damp brush. I got it wet and then tapped it off on a paper towel and then just gently melded that color, just rubbing very gently, just, just letting that color come right into the yellow and turn a little bit orangey. And this is our background. So we haven't done the foreground of the picture yet. We're only working on the background. So the next color that we'll incorporate in this is the ochre. So I'm using the same brush. I want my ochre just to run very slightly along the line of my coast or, or my, uh, my horizon line, this ochre. So it's kind of watered down. I don't want it too strong, but it is going to indicate or give different focus to my shoreline. And again, just blending that in just a little bit. You can tap your brush off, just use a damp brush and pull that color, just move it. It has no choice but to move if you're using a damp brush on a wet color, or even if it's the colors dried. If your brush is damp, the color has to move. We're almost at half time. So before we get to half time, we're just gonna run a little bit of this ochre in our water. So again, I've got some waves in my water and I'm just going to add a little bit of ochre here and there throughout, almost not touching the canvas, just letting that color just come off my brush. Doesn't have to be any specific pattern, just follow what you've got there. And I'm just using the side of my brush and I can go right to that loon. I can go right on that loon if I like or underneath it. So I'm just putting that in between with the yellow. I'm still leaving white in my background. I still want a little bit of white showing. So if I'm getting too dark of a color or too much of one color, I can just use a damp brush and just blend that out a little bit. Just have fun with it. Just let that color move around. And everyone's going to be a little bit different. Everyone's going to have a little bit different variety. You might have more ochre, you might have more yellow, you might have more or less white. And that's perfectly okay. That's your own personality, your own individuality coming out, which is encouraged. So we are at half time, or one minute away, or two minutes away. So the card pulled from for today, thank you for the person that said stop, says I am flourishing. So this is just something that I read for everyone during the class. 
So it's a, no, this is a good one. <laughs> Imagine your income expanding easily and effortlessly. Trust that all your material needs are being met by the universe. Wow, <laughs> that would be a nice thing, wouldn't it? Imagine your income expanding easily and effortlessly. Trust that all your material needs are being met by the universe. So that's trusting and believing that we are flourishing. Very good. That would be very nice. So just trust, trust, and we'll be okay. All right. So with that, I'm going to stop. Um, I'm going to use my blow dryer. I'm going to blow dry. We can't, yes, it does sound great, doesn't it, Claire? So we can't put anything else on top of this canvas until it's completely dry. So when you want to check and see if you use the back of your hand and, and touch your canvas, if it's cold, it's still wet. If it's warm to the touch or not, I mean, not cold, then you'll know that it's dry. Um, not to put your fingers on because we have natural oils in our hands. So use the back of your hand. So with that, I'm going to mute and it's time for all of us to blow dry. You can hear me and now I have a credit card. I did go again. Actually, it's my Air Miles card. <laughs> so let's work a little bit now. If it's dry, we're going to work a little bit now on those trees. So remember in the beginning, I had said I would show you your trees don't have to be the same as mine or your neighbors. Everyone's can be different trees. We have a stick in the picture. If we're going to make an evergreen tree, we can work that way. If you would prefer a tree with branches, that's entirely up to you. If you want to make your trees, because you've got your stick in the center, if you want to make them more of an evergreen, a full evergreen, then you can do that. So this is full on, on you artistic license to make your trees how you like. I'm going to follow the same pattern that I have in, on, uh, on these trees or on the picture. So if I look at that particular type of tree, Firstly, I'll do my stem. So I'm going to start with this, this one tree on the right-hand side, just in black. And I'm switching to a number two. So it's a little bit finer, number two brush. And I'm just going to do the starting of my tree. And I'm just using black. If you have panes gray, that's fine. If you want to make panes gray darker, you can add red or blue, or you can use a color called indigo, which is a very deep blue. So in order to make these trees, I'm just gonna darken that up a little bit. It's not very straight, but that's okay. So in order to make these trees, I'm doing a swizzle stick kind of fashion. Starting at the top, it's getting wider and wider until I get to the bottom. Now I need to fill in some branches in between. And some of them can go from the top down, some can just stick straight out. Because these trees tend to grow uh, every which way, you can just add on branches all different directions. And if this is stressing you out, 
take a deep breath. It'll be okay. Trust that your tree will be fine. Now this tree on the outer edge is taller. So I'm starting at the top, working my way down to the bottom. It does not have to be a complete straight line. Still working with straight black. If it's Payne's gray you have, that's fine, or indigo. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going just like a swizzle stick, just starting narrow at the top, getting wider as I go to the bottom. And this one's going to have to go off the page because it's right at the side. And last, I just make it a little bit narrower, but so now I'm going to add some branches. Some can go up and some can go down. And sometimes these trees don't have a straight top. They have just a little bit of a point at the top. One branch goes off one side, the other. Sometimes they don't even have branches up at the top, they're bare. So I'll just continue on with this tree, just adding branches. And you can practice this just when you're sitting on the phone with a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen, and you can practice just making trees. And then when you go to actually put it on canvas, you'll be amazed what you can do. We have a gap in the middle between the trees, or at least I do. If you don't, that's okay. But I'm going to put some black paint just a little bar of wet black paint. I might add just a dot of water so it's quite fluid. And then I'm going to use my credit card, my gift card, whatever you've got, but we're just using the, the corner edge. And I'm going to just lightly pull up and just flick a little bit. Now this is grasses. So grasses don't grow straight up and down. So if I'm to show you grasses, grasses grow this way, they grow this way, they grow up and straight and over and they cross over each other. So this is sort of the effect we're looking for for your grasses in the center. And then at the front of that other tree, I'm going to do the same thing, just add some wet black. Back to my credit card. And I'm just going up just, just a little strokes. Sometimes you get almost uh, where you'll go over and the paint will disappear. So you'll have a whitish line come in there. That's beautiful. So just leave that, that's lovely. So don't think that you have to fill in all of that gap. You see, I've got a little bit of whitish in there where the paint's been lifted. And this one's more solid. And look at just from a piece of paper, our pictures coming together. So let's move over to the other side. We have three trees to do. Again, working in black. I'm just going to work one tree at a time from top to bottom. Starting at the top, just a little zigzag. And then I'm just going to zigzag all the way along, all the way across, wider at the bottom. 
And then I'm just going to start to add some branches. Some can go down, some can go up. Just filling in some spaces. Again, if this is stressing you out, just take a deep breath. It'll be okay. We have our little tree in the center. So I like to do odd numbers of things. Our brain, so there will be five trees here. We have one, two, three, four, and this will be a fifth one. Odd numbers have an eye linger a little bit longer. Even numbers, people can commute quickly. The object of your art is to have somebody look a little bit longer. So again, a little zigzag pattern. Wider at the bottom. It looks a little bit different than the others, that's okay. And then I'll start just to pop in a few branches here and there. Some going up, some going down. We'll come back and do a little bit more grass at the bottom of that one. We have our third tree on this side. It's a very tall tree. Doing my tree trunk. And then I'm going to start just to zigzag, narrow at first, getting wider, getting wider because it's a bigger tree and it's right at the edge. And then again, just pop in a few branches. I can give it a little stick top, just make it interesting looking. And they're not all supposed to look exactly the same. Trees in the forest don't all look exactly the same. And remember that watercolor is going to dry 20 to 30% lighter from when you put it on. So some of your trees may look a little bit on the gray side once they dry. And you can go back and you can add on fresh color if you like. But let's give some grasses at the front of that set of three. So a nice big patch of wet black. And my Air Miles card or your credit card, your gift card. And I'm just going to put some nice grass at the front. And remembering that grass grows all different directions. It looks like I have a shooting star in my sky, so I'm just going to use some wet paint. Remember that I've said that if you wet paint, even once it's dry, it has no choice but to move. So I just wet that with just a little bit of water. And there, that has changed my sky a little bit, but I'm good with that. The black line has disappeared, or mostly. Let's see if we can make that just go away. There we go. We have another little patch between each of the trees. Just a little tiny patch. If you have a space between your trees and you want to add a little bit of black and do some little grasses, that's a good time to do that. Now, before we put the shadow in the water of our trees, 
we're going to paint that loon. So that I'm using a small brush. This is my number two pointed brush. And I'm just using black. I'm going to do the outline of my loon. Just going to paint the outline. So this is where you'll need to take a deep breath. Don't panic, it's going to be fine. Just painting that loon on the outside. And then we can fill in the center. Now it is a silhouette, so it doesn't need an eye. If you want to leave space for an eye, you go ahead. Um, but I'm not in a silhouette, it's usually all one color. And again, if your color has lightened and you need to darken that up, mine went a little bit on the gray side. So I'm just going to darken that color up. More color, less, less water. I'll give you a deeper color. Now we do have that break of white we've left in between our horizon line and the water. So we're going to leave that white space. I'm not going to put anything in that white space, but below it, I'm going to start to put the exact opposite of the tree that I have only, I would say, a half of that, um, the look of that tree. So I'm putting black in the water for the tree that I've got in the corner. So I'm only doing half. And I'm going to do that same zigzag going from large down to small, and stopping at that stage. So I've got a reflection of that tree in the water. I'm going to do the same with the tree beside it. So whatever is up above needs to be down below. And it's a smaller tree than this, the tree beside it. So I don't need to do quite as much. The same on the other side, below that white line. I've got a little tree. So I'm using black. And a smaller tree beside that one. And I've got quite a large tree on this side. So it's the biggest on the one side. So I'm going to go a little bit farther down and zigzag back up to the edge. We also want to put an indicator for the grasses that we've got down below. So I'm going to put a little black line, very small black line, and I'm going to pull that color down with my credit card. You don't have to be exact. It just needs to look like a reflection in the water. 
and that's underneath that white line. So on all three, I'll just give a little dot of black and then pull that down. And lastly, we want to put some energy around this loon. Otherwise, this loon just looks like it's just sitting there not doing anything. But this loon is actually moving. So with my small brush, with my number two pointed brush, and with black paint, I'm going to put some rings in the water just around, just to indicate where would this loon be going to next. How is, it, how is its body sitting in the water? So they're, they're just curvatures really, just an indicator that that's where the loon is going. And then with those feet paddling, we're going to give a little bit of movement to the water. And in order to indicate where it's come from, we just want to put a little bit, a few dots, just for direction. It's come from this direction, so it's gone that way. So lastly, what we'll do is decide where are we going to put our artist signature in this picture. So you want to sign your art. It's important to put your, your initials or your name somewhere on your artwork. So I'm going to sign mine right here. That's up to you where you want to put it, if you want to put it on the back, but it's nice to have it somewhere that when you hold it up or when you look at it, you can see that was your piece of art. And if for whatever reason you want that to disappear off into the distance, you don't want that to be quite so obvious, you can put some reeds, some little, little sprigs of bulrushes or something in the corner and have your signature on there. But it's still signed and part of the artwork. So that's what you can do in one hour. 